Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to talk a little bit more about gender affirming body piercings, but we're talking about something a little different today. See, as a non-binary and transgender person myself and as a piercer who does a lot of gender affirming piercings for the trans community, that's usually what I spend a lot of my time talking about when I talk about gender affirmation. But I realized that there's this like growing belief that seems to be that gender affirmation is something that's only for queer and trans folks, and that is just so blatantly false. Uh, cisgender people use gender affirmation all the time and receive so much affirmation and so much positivity and so much healing and hope from gender affirming procedures and services and even body piercings. So I figured I should sit down and make a video all about gender affirming piercings for cisgender folks. And I can think of no better way to start this video off than talking about one of the oldest, most cross-cultural, cross-religious, cross-continent gender affirming practices, which is earlobe piercings for girls and women. In societies and cultures all over the world, you can find little girls getting their ears pierced when they are just days and weeks old as a rite of passage into femininity and womanhood. And this was typically done by the matriarch of the family, a grandmother, a great grandmother, uh, a priestess or a healing woman in the village or in the town. And it was done as a ritual. The girl's mother, sisters, aunts, grandmothers, all of the women that she was related to would gather together for this ceremony of piercing her ears. And again, like I mentioned, a lot of times it was done throughout families. It was the grandmother who pierced the ears of all of the children and grandchildren. And earrings have always held that, I think, like femininity and sacred femininity because of these rituals and rites of practice. Like I very much remember growing up and seeing my mom putting on earrings and my aunt and my grandmother and going, well, when, when do I get earrings? When will I be able to put earrings on and have earrings? And all day long in my piercing studios, I see the same ritual modernized for the current day. I see little girls, five, six, seven, and eight coming into the studio with their mom and their older sister and their grandma, all of the women in their family there to support them on getting their ears pierced, telling them their stories of what their ear piercing experience was like, telling them about the earrings that they'll be able to borrow once they're healed, and just celebrating this act that feels like a rite of passage into girlhood. And I remember growing up, like loving the look of pierced ears, loving the look of earrings, being really interested in the jewelry that my grandmother and my mother wore, and very curious about wearing that myself. Now, none of this is to say that men or non-binary folks can't get their ears pierced and still have affirmation from them and things like that. Uh, but when we talk about piercings as gender affirming, and when we also talk about rituals surrounding piercings, earlobe piercings have a very long rooted history as like a feminine coming of age or rite of passage ritual, particularly in the indigenous Americas, particularly in South America, more modernly in a lot of Latino cultures. We also see a lot of this very widespread across both Western and Eastern European with roots that we can date back all the way to different pagan societies. We also see this all across South and Eastern Asia. Uh, and earlobe piercings have this incredibly rich, long history and association throughout all of these cultures as this like rite of passage and like welcoming to girlhood. And we see a lot of earrings that we've found and uncovered that have historical and cultural meaning for rituals or rites of passage of femininity. We see earrings as a form of adornment, as a very like gender affirming thing. Anyone who got their ears pierced as a little girl can relate to the feeling of getting your like first pair of hoops uh, or first pair of dangly earrings and what like a moment that was for you and what just like an affirmation of your gender that was for you. And when I think back to my experiences of getting my earlobes pierced for the first time, it definitely felt to me, even at that young age, like a rite of passage. Again, I'd seen all of the other women in my family putting on their earrings and taking them off and wearing different earrings. And it just felt like, like this marker, this sign that I was a girl, that I was a woman. And I was so excited to get my ears pierced and then so excited to get earrings that I could change in and out. And it meant so much to me. So I really think my very first experience with a very concretely gender affirming thing 
with body piercing and also with gender affirming modifications was all getting my earlobes pierced. And that is so incredible that that is a practice that is still around today. Now it's not just earlobe piercings that can have this effect. Many, many piercings can have different elements of gender affirmation. And if we wanna talk about it today, I gotta talk about the nostril piercing. Nostril piercings have also been used very widespread in multiple different cultures with lots of different links to different rites and rituals. Uh, in particular, nostril piercings were often signifiers of marital status. Uh, there is even a passage very early on in the Bible that references Rebecca being given a nose ring and bracelets to signify that she was going to become a bride. So nostril piercings have been used as like feminine gender affirming piercings to signify like marital status and a woman's place within the community. And while I feel like I could dive into an entire video about that, specifically for this video on cisgender affirming piercings, if we want to talk about nostril piercings, for me, what stands out is Tupac's nostril piercing and how this piercing became a symbol for masculinity and strength and toughness in the 90s and onwards. I mean, I still to this day have clients who come into my piercing room and go, I want to get my nostril pierced just like Tupac's. Sometimes they even have the album cover already up on their phone, ready to go to show me where they want for placement. And in loudly and proudly embracing having his nose pierced, and not only embracing it, but putting it on his album art covers, wearing these big, loud diamonds to events and occasions, Tupac really set a precedence for a certain level of masculinity at that time. And his nose piercing became a way for other men to emulate that same style and type of masculinity and became incredibly gender affirming. Like I said, clients still come into the studio to this day and ask for that. And I watch them get up in the mirror and look at their nose after we've pierced it. And I watch this light come alive in their face and this smile and just this presence in their body. And I watch the piercing provide them this sense of affirmation to be closer to someone who they consider an idol of masculinity, who, in, who espouses values that they find important, who is someone who they look up to as far as how they want to live their life. And to get this piercing to emulate his same style, his same presence, his same appearance, that is absolutely a form of affirmation. And not only is this just in general very gender affirming for men, but specifically for black men, Tupac had an unimaginable impact on the culture of black men at that time and what he did with his music, what he did with his social activism, and also what he did as far as setting fashion trends and inspiring generations of men who came after him to dress like him, to style their hair like him, and to get their nose pierced like him to espouse this specific type of masculinity is incredible to have such a lasting impact. And wow, you want to talk about gender affirming body piercings? That nostril piercing is such a good example of it. Now, if we're going to keep this video to gender affirming body piercings for cisgender folks, you know, I got to touch on Britney Spears belly button piercing and what that did for women and girls all across the 90s, how like sexy and confident and beautiful getting your belly button pierced made a lot of women feel and how this piercing became synonymous with a woman taking agency over her body and sex and sexuality and became a way for women to to get this piercing and say through this piercing like I am my own person I am in control of my body of my sexuality I'm gonna do what I want with my body show it off the way that I want Ugh, so so incredibly empowering what happened through that but in that same vein nipple piercings Ooh, there are few piercings more gender affirming across the spectrum than nipple piercings uh, for a multitude of reasons but for today's video i really want to focus on the way that they are gender affirming for women we spend our whole lives being told that our breasts are wrong they're too small they're too big they're too saggy they face too outwards, they face too downwards, our nipples are the wrong size, they're the wrong color, they're the wrong shape, they're too big, they're too small. Like we are constantly chasing this impossible dream of perfection surrounding our breasts and are inundated with information from 
advertisements and movies and music and TV with this pressure for our breasts to look this very particular, very largely unachievable way for most people. Uh, and this is a body part that a lot of women and girls grow up with a lot of insecurity around. It can be a point of bullying. It can be a point of sexual harassment, assault, and abuse. It can be a part of our body that we have an incredibly, incredibly complicated relationship with. And getting your nipples pierced can be so unbelievably empowering to helping you love a part of your body that society is trying so hard to make you hate. And I feel so honored to be trusted to do nipple piercings so frequently. This is a service uh, that people seek me out for because if you are over 18, you can check out my portfolio. I have what I think is a relatively robust portfolio with a large variety of body types featured. And I do nipple piercings on all shapes and sizes of breasts and nipples. And I regularly get to watch clients come in and disrobe for the piercing and they're they're very uncomfortable they're kind of keeping themselves covered they're nervous a lot of times clients will apologize to me for their bodies they'll say oh i'm so sorry that like my boobs are so saggy or my nipples sit that way and i'll have to go oh my god do not apologize for the body that you have the body that you have is beautiful and it is perfect exactly the way that it is and we are going to celebrate it exactly the way that it is today by doing these piercings and I watch these clients get up off the table after dealing with a piercing that is, it's intense. It's definitely pretty up there as far as the sensations of piercings go. So the amount of bravery and confidence and courage that it takes to walk into a piercing room, to disrobe in front of a stranger and let a stranger see an intimate part of your body that you feel bad about often, and then to endure the sensation of getting them pierced, that requires so much confidence and bravery and I watch these clients get up and look in the mirror and I watch that body language go from this to this I watch the confidence I watch the light fill their face I watch the smile I watch the tears I watch this moment where people look in the mirror and for sometimes the first time in their entire life they are not thinking about the fact that their boobs are the wrong size or the wrong shape or in the wrong place they just look in the mirror and think to themselves, oh my God, I did that. I did that thing that terrified me and scared me and was painful. And look at how beautiful I look. Look at how sexy I look. Look at how cool these piercings look. And even if it only lasts for a split second, they get this reprieve from the constant cultural and societal negativities They've been told about their bodies their entire lives and they get to have this moment with themselves in the mirror where they just love what they see, where they just feel confident and connected and proud of what they see. And that is the very definition of gender affirmation at its core. And I love doing these piercings for this reason. The emotional response that I see nipple piercings elicit in so many different clients is truly nothing short of magic. These piercings have an incredible ability to make you feel so much more confident in your body, so sexy, so capable. The fact that they can be a difficult piercing to get just adds to a level of like confidence and bravery. People stand taller after they got their nipples pierced. They're like, I just fucking did that. One of my favorite stories ever was a client who got her nipples pierced while I was a piercer in Florida. And after getting up and looking in the mirror, she screamed so loud that the whole studio could hear her. I can do anything. It just perfectly encapsulated the feeling that you have after getting your nipples pierced. And wow, just what an incredible experience to be able to provide other people with and to get to be a part of on a regular basis. And what an incredible level of affirmation these piercings offer to the people who wear them. But particularly women, given the unique relationships we have with this part of our body, thanks to society and culture. And then of course, genital piercings. When I talk a lot about gender affirming piercings for trans folks, there's definitely a focus on genital piercings because of the gender affirmation that they can have. And it is the exact same thing for cisgender clients. There is definitely just so much affirmation and reconnection that can be found through genital piercings. Uh, one of the most impactful ways I find folks use this are 
men who have been circumcised and have complications from circumcision, have a loss of sensation or a loss of feeling, struggle with issues with scar tissue um, and nerve damage from circumcision, or just feel a loss of agency over their bodies. They did not consent to be circumcised. They didn't want this to happen. And now as an adult, they wish they hadn't been, but they cannot undo what has been done. So there is this disconnect with this part of their body. There's also a level of shame and guilt surrounding this part of their body. And a lot of those clients end up seeking me out to do genital piercing work. PAs being some of the most common, but apodravias, ampelangs, frenums, all these piercings done to allow them to reconnect with this part of their body and retake agency over this body and say, okay, I was not given agency. I was not allowed to consent to getting circumcised, but I can take back that agency and consent to this piercing. And I can experience a body modification with this body part where I am fully a part of the process, where I am fully consenting to it, where I am present for it, where I want it. And in choosing something that I want for this part of my anatomy, I am taking it back. And especially clients who struggle with negative side effects post-circumcision, struggle with erection and orgasm because of scar tissue or nerve damage, or just a general loss of sensitivity and sensation, piercings can also provide a lot more sensation and a lot more stimulation. I'll have clients come back and tell me that it is significantly easier for them to orgasm since they've gotten a Prince Albert piercing because the movement of the ring and the movement of the jewelry create sensations that they previously didn't have, sensations that were taken from them by being circumcised as a baby without their consent. And it feels incredibly empowering for them to reconnect with their manhood and their masculinity in this way, as well as with their sexuality and their sexual identity through having this piercing. And oftentimes our sexuality and our sexual identity can be very much intertwined with our gender identity and our experience of gender. So to have something done to you without your consent that affects your relationship with your body and your body's sexual function, that can be a deep blow to your gender identity and how you relate to your gender. And for men, their masculinity and how they feel about their masculinity. And these piercings can be an incredible way of allowing them to reconnect with those parts of their body and build new and healthy relationships and feel more secure and affirmed in their masculinity. Now, of course, if we wanna talk about things being done to your body without consent and loss of agency, we do need to have a conversation about sexual assault and sexual violence. Uh, if this is not something that you wanna hear, uh, skip through this part of this video, you do not have to watch it. Um, but sexual assault survivors very often find genital piercings to be very, very affirming. And these can be assault survivors of any gender. What I'd like to talk about for this video is women. Uh, statistically, women are much more likely to be victims of sexual assault and sexual violence. And this can create a very, very painful disconnect and experience in your body. You can feel like your genitals are corrupted or, or gross or dirty or bad. There is this intense sense of shame and discomfort for many survivors of sexual violence. And it feels wrong to experience sexual pleasure and sexual bliss again. Or on the opposite, many survivors turn to hypersexuality to deal with this trauma. And like we just talked about, Sexuality and gender identity can often be very interlinked. It is very common for survivors to express feeling like less of a woman um, or less feminine or less worthy because they've been assaulted. And body piercings can be an incredibly powerful way to heal your connection with that part of your body and reclaim it and take it back. Uh, I know for me, I am a survivor of childhood sexual assault and I struggled really heavily with that throughout my teenage years and processing the way that that impacted me, especially because I, I truly did not understand the impact of what was being done to me when I was a young child. Uh, so I had to grapple with that as I grew older and I felt a very intense disconnect and sense of shame from those parts of my body because of what had happened. And I'm very fortunate that I discovered piercing and piercing had already given me a lot of affirming experiences with facial and ear piercings. So I decided to try getting a genital piercing very shortly after I turned 18 
And it was an unbelievably healing experience. It really allowed me to reconnect with this part of my body, even just physically the act of healing the piercing and having to like clean it every day and check it every day. That was more interaction than I'd done with my genitals than most of my high school life. I just kind of wanted to pretend that I didn't have them and they didn't exist because of the guilt and the shame and the trauma I was holding on to from my sexual abuse. And getting this piercing really allowed me to heal my relationship with my body um, and also was very gender affirming and allowed me to feel feminine and sexy and beautiful again. And many, many survivors uh, talk about having the same experience with getting genital piercings and the same level of reconnection and empowerment within their body. Uh, a lot of them express having something that their abuser has never touched and never seen that is just for them feels transformative. It feels like they're reborn as a new woman, as a new person, thanks to this body piercing. And this isn't the only way in which these piercings can allow us to reconnect to our bodies. If we're gonna talk about gender affirmation, we definitely also need to talk about motherhood uh, and the amount of mothers who seek out particularly nipple and genital piercings after it's safe for them to do so after giving birth and delivery and breastfeeding and things like that. Pregnancy is a lot. It is nine months of your body belonging to the life that you are growing inside of it. Your very organs rearranging themselves to make space for this baby. Your entire body no longer feels like yours. And many women express not feeling very womanly or beautiful or sexy while they're pregnant and their feet hurt and they're swollen and they're bloated and they're hungry and they're nauseous and just all of these different things that come along with pregnancy. And then of course, delivering the baby does not give you a respite from this. Most women immediately go into the throes of motherhood, which is its own unique challenge. So I see a lot of women who come into my studio who are looking to use body piercing as a way to reconnect with themselves and remind themselves, yes, I am a mother, but I'm also a woman. I'm also myself. I can be a mother, but I can also be sexy. I can also be beautiful. I can also be confident. And body piercings can be a really concrete way of reaffirming their connection with their body and saying, okay, my body belonged to my baby for the last 12, 24 months being pregnant, giving birth and caring for them. But now my child is old enough. I'm still a mother but I am also a woman. I am also a person. And this piercing or this tattoo is my way of saying, okay, I'm taking my body back. My body still in part belongs to my child as I'm mothering, but it also still in part belongs to me. Uh, and there is so much gender affirmation to be found in using piercings to rebuild this connection with your body. Uh, and a lot of mothers specifically choose nipple and genital piercings because I'm gonna tell you what, I don't have kids, but I think it seems really hard to feel super sexy when your breasts are sore from breastfeeding and you're swollen and you're tired and you haven't slept through the night and you don't remember when your last shower was and you don't remember if you brushed your teeth this morning because you've been so busy taking care of your kid. Um, so getting some of these piercings can be a really great way for these women to reconnect with their body and reconnect to these parts of their bodies. The point that I'd like to make with this video and these examples is that piercings can be a very powerful tool for gender affirmation for anyone, man, woman, cis, trans, non-binary, you name it. Piercings can be a very important tool for gender affirmation if you let them be. Uh, and oftentimes people don't even consciously realize they're using piercings as a tool for gender affirmation. Every young woman who walks through my studio and just goes, yeah, I just, I really am insecure about my boobs. So I wanted to get my nipples pierced. So hopefully it makes me feel a little bit more confident and sexy in them. That's gender affirmation, babe. That's what we're doing here. We are affirming how you feel and your womanhood and your femininity and your sexuality through these body piercings. And it is an honor and a blessing and just the greatest thing in the world to be entrusted to provide these experiences for clients. So I hope talking about some of the ways cisgender clients use piercings for gender affirmation hopefully opens you up to how much potential there is for these things to be used in this way and how much just incredible healing and magic body piercing has to offer every single person who gets it and experiences it. 
thank you so much to every single client who has ever passed through my doors and trusted me with your body and trusted me to provide these experiences for you. And thank you to everyone who watches my videos and gives me a platform to be able to talk about something that I am so unbelievably passionate about and something that I care about so deeply. I can't wait to sit down and chat with y'all again soon. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.